It is being filled by the present company that is operating now. You are refilling it now. Yes. Where is the example of it? You can go to that the main three mining framework to a much more rationally ordered, organized mining. Yes, they are the aggregates. Yes, this is what we are calling all the states of Nigeria in all the local government. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very powerful analogy. Yes. Yeah. That we had a big job in our hands. We must increase the level of beneficiation exactly. and processing locally. Gold mining has given many nations a license to play in the field of global economics. The South African economy is largely driven by its gold mining, while the production of gold in Ghana contributes 5% to her GDP. In 2008, Nigeria identified gold as one of the seven solid minerals abundant in the country whose mining can change the economic indices of the country. Uh, all your, 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 your Just how much gold of... does Nigeria have? If you look at my, our own sheath belts here, covers almost 400 kilometer belt in the western half of the country, 800 kilometers by length and then 400 kilometers by width, 14 different areas that we have not even ex explored 1% of that. I'll give you an example. In Elisha alone, and it's a well-known story, the Iquenido gold deposit, in just an area of one kilometer by one kilometer, they have already at least uh, 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 got a reserve of over one million ounces of gold. They're exploring more now to expand it to three kilometers so that they can get at least about three million ounces at very shallow depths. And in Elisha alone, Iquenido is just one of the clusters, of seven, one, one of the seven clusters of gold. The potentials are truly mind-boggling. What makes sense to the layman is the projection of how much gold mining can earn the nation in terms of foreign currency. Every month, conservatively, they get about 40 kg of gold every month from illegal operations, shallow illegal operations. In just one of the fields, in one of the clusters, in Elisha alone, one kilogram of gold is about 30 ounces. An ounce of gold in the market today is $1,200. So if you multiply 30 by 30, that's about 900 plus ounces of gold. Multiply it by $1,000 plus, that gives you about a million dollars. That's about almost uh, 403, three to $400 million uh, naira every month. And that's just from illegal artisanal operation. As has been affirmed by many, Nigeria is truly endowed and can be a major player in the global mining industry. One major reason has been advanced for the nearly zero progress made in turning these mining potentials into reality, and that is the discovery of petroleum in 1956. Once we discovered oil, mining went down significantly. Uh, and, and to show you the, the, the way that trajectory w works, in the First Republic, the ministers in charge of this sector were ministers of either mines and power or ministers of mineral resources, in which petroleum used to be a tiny department. When uh, Dan Mussolini Kano was the minister of mines, or when Alaji Shetima Limon Guno was the Minister of Mines, petroleum was a tiny portion of the overall mining portfolio. But the irony was that later mining became a portion of petroleum resources. In fact, up till the time that we had uh, uh, Professor Jibril Aminu in charge, it used to be the Ministry of Petroleum and Mineral Resources. Uh, 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 and then 
things went pear shaped, we started focusing a lot more on oil because oil was easy for us to extract and to make money. And we had a whole range of joint venture uh, uh, operations with many international oil companies. And uh, the money was good. So we lost our bearing. We removed our eye from the mining ball. And we basically just um, uh, embraced oil and gas. The danger of over-dependence on one commodity to finance the economy, however, became obvious to successive governments, giving rise to renewed focus in the mining of other minerals, now known as solid minerals. This renewed impetus saw to the identification of seven minerals as being those that the nation will focus on in changing the face of the economy. The minerals are gold, coal, limestone, iron ore, lead, zinc, bitumen, and barite. However, other factors have militated against the actualization of the goal of making Nigeria a global mining destination. A lack of planning is one of them. You need to plan. The, the mining sector needs planning. The mining sector needs consistency. The mining sector is a knowledge industry. It's not just an all commerce thing. It's for, it's, it has to be done systematically. It has to be done scientifically. You have to carry the people along, the miners. You have to carry along those who are financing the development partners and all that. And that On assumption of office, Dr. Kayo De Fahimi and his counterpart, Honorable Abubakar Bawabwari, after acknowledging the absence of a long-term plan, put together a group of experts to design a roadmap for the growth and development of the mining sector. The committee had seven terms of reference which include to identify hindrances to the development of the mining sector, identify strategies to overcoming existing hindrances, prioritizing activities and providing a time frame for all activities including proposed action plans to actualize the strategies. Defining mechanisms for implementation and performance monitoring with key indicators and developing a communication strategy for consultation and engagement of all stakeholders in the industry, including states, communities and other ministries. The committee was chaired by Professor Ibrahim Garba, Vice-Chancellor ABU Zaria and Professor Malomo, former Director General of the Geological Survey Agency. It completed its assignment in three months after which their recommendations were reviewed. That committee produced a report which we subjected to multi-stakeholder engagements. We brought states into the picture. We held a series of uh, um, workshops with states to gather more inputs into that roadmap. And this was what eventually went to the Federal Executive Council and was approved uh, around about August 2016. Uh, and this formed the basis of everything we've done in the sector. The roadmap for the growth and development of the mining industry in Nigeria was accepted by the Federal Executive Council as a working document for turning the mining sector around. It is a 10-year plan which aspires to build a world-class minerals and mining ecosystem designed to serve a targeted domestic and export market for minerals and ores. The overall objective of this roadmap is to see that the mining industry becomes a veritable source of wealth creation for Nigeria, bringing in more revenue and at the same time creating employment and then seeing to the overall sustainable development of the nation as being contributed or as the mining sector will be contributing. The roadmap has been described as the most important thing that has happened to the mining industry in Nigeria. The institutionalization of this roadmap alone 
is the single most important thing that happened to this sector under this, the leadership of these two gentlemen. That, when you are talking about building institutional capacity, this roadmap, the institutionalization of this roadmap gives, is the first most important uh, uh, thing that has happened in this sector. It shows the weaknesses in the sector and how to ameliorate them. It examines the entire sector and how it intends to propel the sector in the short, medium, and long term. This is the greatest effort that this administration has done to build institutional and uh, individual capacity. To see that a roadmap does not go the way of other roadmaps, a mining implementation committee was inaugurated, which in itself is a recommendation contained in the document. I love the road. Professor Okunola chairs the mining implementation strategy team. The committee I chair is to uh, develop strategies for the implementation of the roadmap. It's not that you, people have not been having, there has not been roadmaps before, but you must develop strategies to even implement those roadmaps. And that is you must then give it what we call uh, the muzzle. Some people must think, some people must do the M and E. That's uh, the, the monitoring and evaluation. So you must develop the KPIs, the key performance indices. So people must think aloud and say, okay, you want to do this. For example, you want to develop capacity. What are those things that are going to capacity development? You want your science data to be accessible. Why don't you go in this way? Maybe you need to develop a website. Maybe you need to get a database. Maybe you need to pull in some digital information that people can assess. So that's strategic thinking. And that is what the, the, the implementation strategy team is about. One of the key actions captured for immediate and short implementation in the roadmap include to finalize the review of key industrial assets and prepare them for strategic turnaround. This is in progress with successes recorded in resolving the litigations around the Ajakuta Steel Complex. One major of the problem that we saw on ground that uh, really attracted our attention was uh, what has happened to our legacy, uh, uh, legacy access, like uh, the Ajaukuta, Itakwe, Delta Steel, Aluminium Spelter, and uh, Okota Basi. We found out that this. Uh, huge national assets that have been affected by legal tussles here and there. There, we started addressing those uh, issues. Other key action in the roadmap is to identify gaps in existing training programs and suggest changes. To build institutional life. This is also being done. Under the same uh, uh, roadmap, we are now trying to send people either to the sector. We have a lot of engineers and mining uh, professionals, uh, what, what, what we call uh, geologists, that have never been to a proper mine. Now, under the instrumentality of this roadmap, we are now poised, we are spending a lot of money sending people to mine, mining outfit like the Beers in South Africa, we are sending people to China, we are sending people to Australia to work hands-on in established mines. So we are building individual and uh, institutional capacity in the sector. Yet another recommendation of the roadmap that is being implemented is the need to expand coverages, resolution of and access to geosciences data in Nigeria. This single recommendation of the roadmap is the foundation for turning Nigeria from being a minerals country to a mining country. About two or three months ago, an advertisement went out for contracts for those who will explore, you know, to create more data for at least about seven or eight minerals, gold, base metals, and the rest. And this is inclusive with the Nigerian Geological Survey Agency that is a repository of all data. So I think, I think they're in the final stages now of uh, getting the companies to those who will final stages of procurement and I think before the end of the year the uh, contracts will be you know all 
those who are you know qualified i believe will be known at the end of the year and then in the next six to ten months still within we'll have been able to generate serious detailed internationally globally acceptable data in terms of sampling in terms of the quality in terms of even knowing the depth even up to reserve estimation in line with the recommendation of the roadmap the Ministry of Mines and Steel Development has embarked on a communication campaign to generate industry buy-in. From press conferences to stakeholder meetings, the Ministry of Mines and Steel is more visible today than it has ever been, both locally and internationally. We are witnessing a surge in partnerships with so many sectors of the Nigerian economy. We have partnership with the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing. The activities of this sector impact positively on what they do. We have partnerships with the financial sector, that is the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Bank of Industry, Central Bank. We have partnerships with international uh, uh, donor agencies. With the amount of programs that had been done this year alone uh, by the by the ministry or the, the, the yes the ministry or facilitated by the ministry or done by the ministry has surpassed what I know in the last five or ten years. The mining council had been constituted. They had the mining summit. They supported the Nigerian Mining Week. They have gone to you know all the mining you know, and they, so they are communicating with the, with the stakeholders. They are that interaction, major two day interaction with development partners. So communicating the roadmap, communicating activities, and then the development partners are coming in. Other recommendations of the roadmap that has seen some activity include begin active communication and promotion of roadmap with stakeholders. Restructure and reorganize the MMSD for more efficient operations. Incentivize financial participation of communities in mining. Actively drive the formalization of ASMs. Promote gender equality and female participation in the sector and many more key action items. The creation of a super regulatory agency is one recommendation that stands out. Why would the mining sector need a new regulatory agency when the ministry exists? The ministers have come with very cogent proposal and uh, they are trying to divest policy from regulation and that is why they have accepted in the under the roadmap to have what they call mining mineral commission to establish a mineral commission for Nigeria so that the issues of licensing and regulation is taken completely away from issues of policy and politics. Uh, not many ministers would want to do that to reduce their own powers. You know, hitherto, a minister can sit down and call the director general of MCO and say issue license. But with the mineral commission, that cannot happen. An independent commission just like NEC in the electricity sector, just like the NCC in the, in the uh, information and technology sector. Uh, we want to have a regulatory body that will regulate the practice and the conduct of this industry so that international investors and even local investors can have confidence in the sanctity of the system. It is expected that if the recommendations contained in the roadmap are successfully implemented, growth will return to the sector in the form of new explorations activity, operation and production from active mining, functional and expanded processing and refining capacity, and higher value additions in exports. We are also quite bullish about insisting that investors must focus on value addition, that is, beneficiation, processing of the mineral types that they are working on, so that these things are not just taken out of Nigeria raw, which has been the experience lately. Uh, once 
we insist that the quality should be improved upon and possibly utilized there to boost our industrial sector. Or if you must export, you must export it at a higher grade by processing it here. So we're encouraging people to put smelting plants, to put processing plants on the ground here in Nigeria as a result of that uh, approach that we have taken. The net outcome of all these is the creation of thousands of direct jobs and hundreds of thousands of indirect jobs. So it can also generate employment at every level among those, not just even the miners, those who are going to process. Look at what's happening in the cement industry. Do we know how many people are employed in the cement industry? They're in their thousands. And they're using just one commodity, limestone and maybe gypsum and the clays. When the ceramic industry blows up, as it is going to do, the number of industries that are about to take off using our clays for ceramics are not less than 10 or 15 that we know now all over the country. When this also blows out, then definitely we're going to have more people in the employment chain. So if this roadmap as it is now, as it's been thought about and is implemented like it's been done now, I want to appreciate the ministry. They could still do more. But what they're doing now is they're putting still more efforts to see that in the next 10 years that we're looking at, the employment to perhaps be next to agriculture. Even as this is expected, one must not forget that the mining cycle is a long one. Consistency of implementation is key to reaping these benefits. Mining has a long gestation period. That is why it's a bit, uh, if you like, uh, I don't want to say disingenuous, but, but it's a bit precipitate to start talking about uh, gains in this short term. But there are gains. The, the foundational uh, strategies that we've put in place beginning to yield dividends. Um, what we're contributing to the coffers of the federal government has increased significantly since we started in this ministry. But we can do a lot better. We can do more. And we're doing a lot more. It's a journey of a thousand years. We've started and we have to just keep going. But like Professor Okunola will like to say, this present administration has so far demonstrated a commitment to implementing the recommendations of the roadmap. I want to still comment the, the administration. They've been following that pattern. So many things that have been happening, you could read them one by one in the roadmap that had been um, highlighted. And I think that's a good thing. It's been less than two years since the launching of the roadmap. A faithful commitment to the intent and purpose of the roadmap. And in that period, the wind of change has already begun to yield results in the area of improved perception by the global mining world, increase in revenue generation due to actively blocking leakages in the system, renewed confidence in the industry by investors and stakeholders alike, and a conviction that indeed Nigeria may just get it right in its quest to diversify the economy via its abundant mineral resources.